Okay, so we're looking at integration from uh, last year. Um, you might have called it anti-differentiation. Uh, Mr. Brady certainly said that you've touched on this. So let's have a look at the simple rule for a function y equals ax to the n. Then we know that the we know that the derivative the derivative is n a x minus one. So the question is, if the derivative was ax to the power of n, what would y be? So how do you go backwards? Okay, that's the question we're asking. So let's look at the next slide. So here's a simple, <laughs> simple rule. Okay, if we just have uh, y dash equals ax to the n, so obviously, so what we've got is the derivative, then the function will be this. So what we have to do is we have to add 1 to the power and then we divide by the new power and then we have to add a constant and we'll see why in a sec. So for instance if looking at going down we looking at a derivative okay so if we've got 2x cubed plus 7x plus 5 the 2x cubed turns into 6x squared the 7x turns into 7 and the 5 disappears so that's the derivative so if we had to go back then 6x squared to go back to 2x cubed we take the term we just write down the 6 the x we add 1 to the power and we divide by the new power and that gives us our 2x cubed back the 7 we just add an x so the 7x is fine but we can't get the 5 back because we don't know what the value of the constant is the 5 could have been any number when you derive any number you get 0 so we don't know what the number is so what we do is we just add a constant so back up here in this box that's the formula so if you've got a derivative and you want to go back to the function you add 1 to the power and you divide by the new power and you add a constant okay copy that down the most important thing is the block okay because we're going to get plenty of practice okay so let's have a go at these ones I want you to pause um, find the I want you to find the function and uh, when you're ready come back live okay so we take the 2x we add 1 to the power and we divide by the power we take the constant and we add an x and we don't so the 3 turns into 3 x, minus 3 turns into minus 3x and we don't know what number there is so we just put plus c and then wherever you can you tidy up so the 2's cancel out so we're left with x squared minus 3x plus a constant and how do you know that that answer is right? well the answer is you can just derive it so x squared turns into 2x minus 3x turns into minus 3 and the constant disappears so you know you're right so the second one take 4x squared and turn it into 4x cubed divide by 3 take the minus 7x take the x and add 1 divide by the new power 2 turns into 2x and then just add a constant and those fractions don't make them mixed numbers just leave them as improper fractions mixed numbers as coefficients don't look good okay hopefully you had a good go at that let's look at the next one so when you have powers so okay this only works now this formula only works if the power sorry the bracket is what I call a linear function the highest power of x is 1 if it was you know ax squared or something like that there's another technique which you'll learn later on but at this stage we're just talking about something simple so if I was deriving okay okay using the chain rule the number out the front number on the power comes out the front so that's your n leave the bracket subtract 1 from the power multiply by the derivative of the bracket and then the constant a and the constant n become a new constant a n so if I was going to go backwards okay so that's that's deriving so if it's going to go backwards and I had a power okay I leave the bracket I add 1 to the power but because I've got to get rid of a n I've got to divide by a and I've got to divide by the new power okay so we'll have a look at that in a sec but that is what you have to know and then we again we just add a constant because we don't know if anything was there 
So copy that down and then come to the next slide. So looking again, so it's this, this is an example. We're still deriving, we're not integrating yet. So if the function was 2x plus 3 to the power 4, the 4 comes out the front, leave the bracket, subtract 1 from the power, multiply by the derivative of the bracket, and then 2 times 4 equals 8. So obviously to get rid of 8, I've got to divide by 2 and 4. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so I've got a derivative and I want to go backwards, so I'm integrating or anti-differentiating, whatever, whatever you want to say. So if you'll have a look, the bracket stays the same. I add 1 to the power. I divide by that power, but I also divide by the derivative or the value of the constant, which is 3, and then add a constant. So the final answer would be 3x minus 5, so that's exactly the same as the bracket. I've added 1 to the power. Divide by 15, because 3 fives are 15, and then add a constant. And again, you can test any answer that you get by deriving. Okay, I think the next one will be try one. No, what I'll do is I'll insert a page before it. So try one for yourself. Okay, so y dash equals uh, 4 x minus 1 squared and I want you to find the function okay pause have a go and then come back when you're ready okay so we take the bracket we add 1 to the power divide by that new power and then I divide by the coefficient of x which is 4 and add a constant so it ends up being 4x minus 1 cubed over 12 plus c, which you can derive, and you will get 4x minus 1 squared if you derive that. Okay. You'll get some practice on that, don't worry. Okay, so to find the value of the c, we need to have some more information in the question. So here's an example. The derivative of a function is given by, so that's the derivative. And I get this bit of information here about a point, and that'll help us. That will give us the value of c eventually. So I've got y dash equals 2x minus 5. I use that earlier stuff that we did, so add 1 to the power, divide by the power, etc., etc. So we end up with y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And now this point information comes in. So you put, uh, put 2 out the front because that's the y value. Put x equals 1, and you end up finding a value for the constant, which is 4. So you rewrite the rewrite the formula and that's the end of the question. And again, you'll get plenty of practice of that. So unless we get information about something on the function, we can't find the value of C. But once we get that extra information somewhere in the question, then we can find the value of the C, which means we can find the function. Okay, copy that down. And what have I done? So what I... What I've got is an exercise, um, I think it's exercise 9a, I'll just check the page. I think it's exercise 9a. Yes, so it's exercise 9a on page 400, and the questions I'm looking at are questions 1 through to 14. Now in actual fact, um, there's, there's, before we do onto that, I just want to do one more example. Um, I thought I had it already. So, if so, sorry, just uh, interrupted the flow there. So, if you've got a sketch of f dash x, can you find the uh, a s uh, can you find a sketch of f x? So, look, I've got uh, a graph where the vertical axis is not f x; it's f dash x. The horizontal scale is still x. So, what do we know? Well, we know We've got positive values of f dash x when x is greater than minus 2. We have negative values of f dash x when x is less than minus 2. And we have f dash x equals 0 at x equals minus 2. So 
f dash x is a straight line. So that means that f dash x must be a parabola. The question is why? Think about that for a sec. Stop, and then when you're ready, come back on to live. Okay, so we've got this is a straight line, so x must be to the power of 1, and when you integrate it, x must be to the power of 2, and that shape is a parabola. So hopefully you understand that. So I'm just going to see if I can put in a few. The page extender is there, so it must be hidden. Oh, yeah, it's a page extender. So let's go back up. So I've got positive fx. So, so when you have positive gradients, um, that means that the tangent must be going that way. When you have negative f dash x, that means the tangents are going that way. And when you have f dash x equals zero, you should know that that's a stationary point or a turning point, you might have realized. Okay, so we've got minus two is the important thing. So at x equals minus two, somewhere there's a turning point and I have positive values on this on this side I've got positive gradients, on that side I've got negative gradients. So that's as much as we know. We don't know the va we don't know the values of the intercepts, we don't know the turning point, but the sketch must look something like that. Okay, so if you go back, that's the exercise I want you to have a go at and see how you go. Right here. Thanks for that. Bye.